Fedora Productions. Hello everyone, my name is Colin Ridgeway, and I really like talking about video games and things. And guess what? It's my birthday today, so that's fun. Why did I say video games? I don't know. But I was thinking about making a video related to a game because it's my birthday and I'm turning 16, so I thought, hey, why not talk about Mary Kay Nasty Sweet 16 for the Nintendo GameCube? Then I realized, why would I do that? So, uh, that's never happening. And th then I thought, like, what if I did the top 10 video of my favorite video games of all time? Then I thought, kind of already said what they are and, like, shown what they are. So, like, not really. My opinion changes all the time for that subject. But one thing I don't really talk about often is movies and some of my favorite films of all time. So I just thought, why not? Those opinions never really change a lot, so... Yeah, let's do it. Are we going to do a top five and, uh, well, top five uh, favorite and least favorite films of all time? And yeah, I guess we should start with my um, uh, top five favorites of all time. So, number five goes to a uh, It Chapter One. Uh, yes, the 2017 film. And uh, this is, now while I say this is a horror film, it's the only film like that's horror related. That's on this, um, well, yeah, it's the only horror film that's on my top five favorites. And it's the only one going to be on this top five. But it's not my favorite horror film of all time, but it's in my top five. And really just because there's a lot of things I love about this film. Just, like, things with, like, um, like, there's kind of, kind of almost, like, a little bit of relatability. Just, like, I love, like, how, but just, like, it's a film about fear and, like, fearing, like, well, I guess kind of the unknown, but just, like, I also like the, like, town or mystery sort of thing that kind of doesn't really go go that much anywhere, but it's, like, I like just, like, this town, like, s sort of like a cursed town sort of thing. I always like uh, some Stephen King, um, like, story, uh, movie films. Uh, I just find them pretty interesting. And, um, it also reminds me a bit of Earthbound, my favorite game of all time, so I guess that holds some ground as well. Um, yeah. Number four goes to a quite, probably the oldest film on this list. I think, yeah, even regarding uh, my least favorites, it's the oldest one, even though, like, in retrospect, it's not the oldest film I've ever seen, not even close. But it is, it's a mad, 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 mad world from 1963. That's my number four. Um, now, why? I, I wasn't expecting much from this. It was like, I heard someone really liked it. I was like, okay, I'll give it a watch. And I didn't really expect to actually like it as much as I did, because, like, I mean, for, it's it's a comedy from 1963. It's, like, over three hours long. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll get some last year in there. It'll be a fun time. I did not expect to enjoy it as much as I was. Like, for all the jokes were, I was laughing along the way, and, like, it feels like a journey. Like, usually, like, in a movie, just, like, it jump cuts to, like, oh, it's, like, a day later, or maybe some time has passed. No, you're experiencing the film in, like, real time. It doesn't feel like it has, like, a slow pace. It actually has, like, a very brisk pace. And it only starts off with a man, like, launching himself off of a highway in his own car. And, uh, like, the people sur sur uh, around the area the that witnessed it ask, like, why did you do that? And he always says, is, like, there's a bunch of money under Giant W. What does that mean? Well, you have to find that out. Find out to, well, watch the movie to actually find out even though the film's from 1963, but it's a great film, and, like, a bunch of people join along the way, and even after they find the money, the madness continues, and it's just an amazing film. Go watch it, although, you know, three hours to spare, so, yeah. Now, my third favorite film is actually a sequel, that being Back to the Future 2. Now, I love the entire trilogy. Like, the trilogy is in, my, like, my top ten overall. I'm just doing a top five for my favorites. But uh, Back to the Future 2 is my favorite because, like, I love the first film. But, like, it takes the first film and goes back to it. And also has, like, of course, like, the cool future scenes. And also has, like, you know, the lead up to Back to the Future 3. And just, like, there's so many cool things about this film that I absolutely love that I just can't talk about. Like, if you haven't seen Back to the Future 2... Watch it. And actually, actually, I haven't seen the trilogy, just watch it. But 2 is my personal favorite, and I just love every single second of it. It's just such a fun time. Now, uh, I'm a, bit t a little bit tied with my top 2, but uh, this, is, this is how I've been viewing it recently for my top 2, so 
Number two is Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Now, I've read four out of the six volumes of the uh, graphic novels, and uh, I do really love the film. Like, everything about it, it seems... It, it, I love it for very personal reasons that I can't really explain well, but I do absolutely think the film is, like, a great, and legitimately great film. And, like, some people may not like it as much as I do, and I, I can understand why, because, like... I mean, the point of Scott Pilgrim is, like, because, like, I've heard, like, man, this character sucks, why would you like the movie? But the point of, of the film is for him to become a better person, to achieve that arc. And while it's not as decently explained in the movie as it is in, like, the graphic novels, I think it's still done decently, and I think it's a great story overall. So, watch the movie, it's a great time. And also has some video game references here and there. Like, there's, there's like, like there's, there's a little, there's a piss meter, there's, like, a, a sonic sound effect here and there. The, the entire, the... The film itself opens up with a link to the past music. I think there's like a Fairy Found remix that had to be like uh, approved by Miyamoto himself, so that's really cool. And um, yeah, it's a great time, and I absolutely enjoy it. And you're probably wondering, what could beat that out? Well, it's a film you probably wouldn't expect. <laughs> um, and that's um, my number one, Akira. The 1988 uh, manga adaptation of a story that is very hard for me to explain. Basically, like, uh, this, like, biker gang sort of thing. Because um, it's the year 2019, after, like, a World War Three sort of thing happens. Um, and they, this biker gang, like, they get into an accident with a psychic kid. And one of them is never seen after that. And then just chaos ensues, to put it at least. Like, he's, like, one of the most powerful beings in all history is almost as powerful as, well, the name, after the char character name of the film, Akira, and it's, um, it's an anime film, of course, and I, I'd say, like, watch it subbed or dubbed, like, I think subbed is slightly better, but dubbed is also pretty, pretty decent as well, like, surprisingly, um, and, yeah, I think both are, like, both sub and dubbed are a great time, and, like, I th the film itself is just absolutely amazing, I'm not sure exactly the differences between, like, the manga and the actual film, uh, like, what they are, but it's, like, I really enjoyed, really enjoyed them a lot. Just, like, the ending blew my mind, and just, like, well, it's not like a, nothing is just revealed, it's just, like, it's just amazing how much, like, effort was put into this film. I absolutely appreciate it, and it has, it has that, a. Uh, it's had a huge, huge um, uh, sensation in in Japan because like it's influenced a lot of things, even in North American culture. Like uh, Stranger Things actually references a thing from it, um, and of course there's a bunch of other Jap like uh, Japanese things that take influence from it, like Final Fantasy VII. And um, yeah, I just really like it. It's and that's I can't really explain exactly why I love all of these films, but it, it, especially Akira, but just like. I just really like it. It's, it's my favorite. And I just, yeah. Now let's talk about negativity. Okay, so, number five. The the fifth least favorite, my list, fifth least favorite film I've ever seen is probably Seed of Chucky. Most, by the way, four out of the five films I'm gonna be talking about for these least favorites are horror films. And uh, Seed of Chucky, it's garbage. And it's it's so stupid. And it just, like, it confuses me of what it's trying to do. It seems like it's trying to be meta, but it doesn't know how to be. And also, there's just, like, stupid, stupid things in there that are just, like, I don't even want to describe them because, like, they're pretty dirty. And, um, it's just so, so bad. And I hate it. <laughs> and it's like, some of the effects are really bad. Like, there's a, like, a really bad matte painting in the end that just looks awful. Even with, like, the color correcting, it looks incredibly just awful. Just, it's terrible. And the film is terrible, and I hate it. And, um, sad that it was the last film for the Child's Play series that got to be theatrical. Because it does not deserve to be. Even though I think it came out... I think, no, I think it came out a year before I was born. Um, so, yeah, the film sucks. And uh, but there is some like, like I can have some like stupid fun with it. Like it's not, 
like it is like at least entertaining like it's not completely boring just like just like things happen it's just like it's really stupid and i hate it and like i don't hate it it's not like like i'm not being super like like i don't think it's offensively bad to me it's not like like so obnoxiously terrible that it's like I want it to die. It's just like it's just a film I really did not like, and that's saying something because there are a couple films in the Child's Play series that a lot of people don't like, like Bride of Chucky or like even Child's Play Three. I've heard some people don't like, but um, yeah, just like See of Chucky, I just didn't like. And uh, number four, Leprechaun Four in Space. And I know if, if you if you're a fan of someone if you're like a person who's re who really likes the Leprechaun series then like good for you if you really like Leprechaun Four like good for you like I know some people that like think that's like highlighted as it as their favorite one for me no so it's, it's um, my least favorite one that I've seen and I've only seen like one to four I haven't seen like Leprechaun in the Hood Back to the Hood or Leprechaun Returns although Leprechaun Returns I hear the best of the films I haven't seen and there's also Leprechaun Origins but screw Leprechaun Origins um but Leprechaun 4 like like it, again it's not boring it's just like what's there I don't like the only thing that I actually like is just one kill of the movie and it's the one that probably everyone remembers from the film and, and if you know what I'm talking about then I don't really need to explain it but if you haven't uh, the leprechaun, um, he comes out of someone's pee hole. That's just amazing. Anyways, um, moving on to number three, just sk skimming over that, uh, is, uh, Jaws the Revenge. Now, Jaws 3D is, well, Jaws didn't really need to be a franchise, like, Jaws 2 is pretty much a rehash of the first film and not much else. Um, and, like, Jaws 3D is just, it's really bad, but it's not, like, super like some things happen with it it's just like you can make fun, fun of some things like there's like one character that always calls some other dude like Govna and just I, I, found, I found that slightly entertaining but it is like a boring and bad film overall and Jaws the Revenge is nothing redeeming about it and I act and like not only do I find it boring but I also just like hate things that happen to the film like like uh I forget her name but just like uh Oh, I'm just gonna call her Miss Brody, but she she just like sucks. I hated her character. Just like she's being so god dang dramatic about everything. And it's so stupid. And also apparently they have like some telepathy thing with a shark, and it's like that's never explained. And also just like uh Michael Michael um Michael Brody, like son of like the Chief Brody, like He's being such a paranoid, like, a, he sucks, basically. He, like, he's not, and also, well, he, he sucks as a character because, like, he doesn't want his mom to date, like, this, I think his name's Hoagie, played by Michael Caine, and, uh, yeah, it's, it, like, so the character sucks, the story sucks, and pretty much nothing happens with it. There's only two kills in the entire film, one in the beginning and one close to the end, and, like, yeah, there's the shark, which I guess you could count as well. But, like, the actual kill for the shark is so, so, so dumb and pathetic. I mean, well, I mean, they stab it. They stab it, like, in the, like, throat. And it's, like, in the TV version, like, it just gets stabbed and falls over whatever. And, like, it dies. Um, and, um, and, like, it, and, like, the, the remaining footage for, like, when it's, like, no, actually, this is in the theatrical version. But in theatrical the actual version, they stab it and it explodes, and the exploding effect is so, so bad. They had a theatrical budget and it looks like garbage. Like, I, literally I could do a better effect than what they did with that. And then when they're showing like the rest of the shark's body falling into the water, it's basically the exact same shots they used for like j the original Jaws, which is unexcusable. Like, yeah, they put like a filter or something over it, but it looks stupid like come on man seriously that's the best you can do also they're just like bad editing in the film in general like sometimes like uh there's one scene where like michael's just like swimming around and like oh there's a shark it attacks it's about to attack him he scratches his arm or something then they're in the ship and then 
And, oh wait, he's in bed now. So it's like, oh, was that a dream? But no, he has, like, the scar. It's like, okay. So we're just gonna ignore that. And then it goes back to where he's back on the ship. It's like, the next day or something. So it's like, it has no, like, general pace. Like, it's, it's very slow pace. So something is like, it goes too fast. And just like, Jaws of Revenge is very bad. <laughs> and it's only number three. It's only number three. God. <laughs> Now, um, number two. And, uh, this is a series that I, I just, I just watched the entire series. I just finished the, the entire, like, movie franchise. And this is easily my least favorite of the entire franchise. And that is Friday the 13th, Part 8. Now, there are four films that, well, three that may, the main people would mainly say, oh yeah, that one was like the worst one. Like, I mean, there's also seven, which is like kind of boring, but like at least stuff, stuff happens in it. So it's not like totally devoid of really anything. Like, okay, so part eight, Jason Takes Manhattan is what I pick. I'm not gonna go over why yet, but I want to over, look over nine, like nine and 10. So uh, part nine, uh, Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday, I think. Um, like, Jason has, like, a demon worm thing, but I actually, like, it's kind of like a guilty pleasure sort of film where I actually kind of enjoyed it. Like, it's stupid, and it goes against continuity, but it's like, at that point, like, I don't care. It's just like, yeah, whatever. Like, J Jason's a worm now, who cares? And, like, I mean, the actual Jason's barely in the film, but, like, I enjoy, it's a mess, but it, it's, it's a mess that I can enjoy. And Jason X is stupid, and it knows it's stupid, and I love it. Like, I actually really like that film. Um, but Jason, like, Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, is so... For, first off, it's dumb. And also, it's, like, technically false advertising because, like, you'd expect, like, like the, the first few shots show, like, actual, like, Madison Square Garden and, like, Times Square and, like, you know, what you'd see in New York City. And then he goes to a boat. And it's like, these two, like, teenagers just get killed because, oh, guess what? They did the sucky wucky, and then, like, yeah, Jason kills them. And then, like, he, he gets on this boat, because, like, Camp Crystal Lake is connected, to, well, I guess, like, Crystal Lake is connected to the ocean now. So they go to New York. But, like, this is, like, a 90-minute film, and an hour of it takes place on this stupid ship with these awful, awful characters, and even the protagonist, like, the final girl... Like, she, like, she doesn't really matter, like, oh, she has some trauma because her, like, awful uncle or whoever that guy was, like, accidentally, like, exposed her to, like, Jason's corpse in Camp Crystal Lake or something like that, or some stupid bull. And just, like, there's, like, child Jason keeps coming back for some reason, but, like, why? And also, just, the characters suck in general. And also, just, like, I hate how the film is called Jason Takes Manhattan. But they're on a stupid boat. When they actually get to Manhattan or New York or whatever, most of the footage isn't even there. It's in Vancouver because that's where they had to film because it's really expensive. Even though at that time it was like it was had the biggest budget of any Friday the Thirteenth film, uh, because like um, New York is really expensive to shoot in. Like it's the second like most expensive place to shoot in. Like I think in the United States or the world, number one being LA, and so like. They they did shoot like Matt. They were, they were supposed to have, so like have like a bunch of like they had they were supposed to have like a bunch of scenes in New York and like <sighs> I just hate this film, man. Like it's so stupid, it's so bad, and I hate it. And when like because like Jason basically like reveals his face at the end, like in every film, and he looks so bad, like. Why it's so sad they had to make Kane Hodder wear like that awful looking Jason face. They're just like I hate this film, man. It's so bad. It's so stupid. It, like, is it boring? No, it's just I hate it because it's stupid and bad. There are bad effects, like again, Jason's face and like God. I really hate this film. I hate it so much. Like, I guess the, the, I guess the coolest thing is, like, when Jason actually is in Times Square. Like, there is an actual shot where, like, Jason's walking around Times Square. Like, he kicks, I think he kicks over some, like, teenager's boombox or something like that. And they, they just look at him. Just like, dude, what was that for? And it's just like, 
And like a fun fact I can give about that is just like Kane Hodder was actually like wandering around that place as Jason Voorhees. Which, if you were there in, like, 1989, just, like, in Times Square, and it's like, oh, yeah, Jason Voorhees right there. Like, that would have been pretty cool. But that's the only, like, good thing I can actually say about, like, the, that movie. But, like, it's really dumb, man. It's so dumb and bad. And, like, I mean, I guess, like, okay, okay so, I guess, like, one thing I can say about a certain kill is that, like, there's this one dude... He's like, like, he's like a boxer character. He's like punching Jason in the face over and over again. And then like, he, he keeps punching at him for like over a minute. It's literally over a minute. I'm not joking about that. And then like, he's like, okay, okay, big guy, take your best shot. And Jason just like, whams like his, like, like his, he punches him so hard, his entire head like comes clean off and lands into a dumpster. Like, was it, was the build-up worth it? No, but it was surprising. It was kind of cool. But overall, yeah, it's stupid. I hate it. And it's my second least, least favorite film of all time. And number one um, is the only one that if, that on this top five least favorite horror film, or just least favorite films of all time that I've ever seen that's not a horror film. And some might even not count it as, like, an actual film, but, like... It's an hour and a half long. Like, I think it's like an hour and 37 or six minutes or something. So, yeah, it's definitely a feature length film. So, that's why I'm going to say the Star Wars Holiday Special was the worst film I've ever seen. And I even said that in my initial review of it that I did back in December of 2019. Which I did because, like, the new Star Wars movie was coming out. And I didn't see it in theaters. I watched it on a plane. But, like, there were some good moments in there. It wasn't it was better than the Last Jedi. I can say that, but like, God, okay, okay just talking about the, the the holiday special. It's so, so painfully boring, and dumb. In like, one of the worst parts about it, like this has nothing to do. With, well, it has to do with the film, obviously, but like, when you see like reviews of it, like they usually just like go over the things that happen in it. But, like, if all the things that happened in it were really quick and were at a fast pace, it would be, like, an, like maybe, like, an ha a half-hour thing. But no. No, it's not like that. Because it's so long. And, like, the concept of, like, oh, a day in the life of a Wookiee, that doesn't sound that bad. It's just awful. Because, like, when they introduce the thing, it keeps going on and on and on, and it doesn't stop, and, like, some things are interesting, but, like, it's just, like, what's the point of this? Like, why is this happening? Like, why was there, why was it that one thing that was, like, Wookiee porn, or whatever that thing was, and, like, like, ugh. I hate this, I hate this thing. It's, like, I mean, I already did an entire review of it, so you can just watch it, like, because I'm not gonna, like, re-review it again, because, like, I've already explained why I hate it, and like even then I said it was probably the, my least favorite film of all time, and it still is my least favorite film of all time because it sucks that much. Albeit, I haven't really like gone out and like watched like people what things could what some people consider like oh yeah this is like what, the worst film I've ever seen in my entire life. It's like oh really? And uh, like I haven't like gone out to like explicitly watch that stuff. Like, and I tried like. The, the act, when I did my review, that was the first time I'd watched the film in full. Because, like, I got, like, to the point where, like, uh, Itchy, or, like, no, what was the name? Uh, the little, the little, uh, the little, uh, che uh Chewie's son that's, uh, the, the worst character I've ever seen in fiction. Um, he, the, like, the, the, like, the, like, cl not clown, um... The whatever, like, show that thing happens, like, the, like, circus sort of act thing. Like, I got up to that and I was just like, my, like, when I was trying watching it because I heard it was so bad, I was like, alright, I'll give it a watch, see what's up. I stopped there, I was like, this is, I can't take this. And then I watched in full. And oh my god, that was one of the worst wastes of time in my entire life. And I've, I have done some horrible decisions. I just, like, I decided to, like, oh, I will try to grind, like, to 99. Level 99 in Earthbound. I got to, like, level 10 and stopped, and it was like, that was a waste of time. 
It would have been even a worse waste of time. But I'd rather do that than watch the holiday special ever again, because even though it's, it takes a shorter amount of time, it's definitely a worse time. And just, it's so... Because, like, they, it has Mark Hamill. It has, like, all the, like... It has, like, Luke Skywalker. It has Han Solo. It has Chewbacca. It has all the characters that you'd recognize as Star Wars, but they're only there for very short periods of time. And, like, they even reuse some shots and just, like, uh I hate the film. It's just, like, I, I can't even just, like... Like, I wanted to go into... The, like, I kind of felt like going into this, like, yelling, like... Like, oh my god, it's like one of the worst things I've ever seen! It's so disgusting and bad! But, like, no, it's like, it has high production, but, well, it was a TV only thing. It only aired once in, like, November of, like, 1978. Like, they knew it was bad. Like, they never released it. Even George Lucas, who approved the script, like, he still wants it. Like, I think he's, he once said, like, if I had the time in a sledgehammer, I'd hunt down every single copy and, um, yeah, destroy it. Which,. I kind of want to do too, because I hate it so much. In conclusion, that was my top five favorite films of all time, my least favorite films of all time. And if you haven't filmed, if you haven't seen my top five, go do that. If you if you've seen at least one of the films, my least my least favorites, well, I guess except Leprechaun Four, because people like that. Um, I'm sorry for you. Conclusion. Um, I'm 16 years old now, that's fun, and, uh, I'll see you next time. I want to do some, um, I, I want to get back to doing short films, because, like, I, I mean, right now I'm doing, like, a, a theater production, but I want to, I want to get back to doing, like, um, like, short films, because, like, I have, I have two short films I really want to do, and, uh, one short film that I've been planning for over a year, like, almost close to two years, um, so, yeah, I hope to get those done. Anyways, see you later, have fun, fuzzy pickles, and I guess see you in the next video, or for whatever I do. And uh, I guess if you like my music stuff, like, glad you do, I want to do more stuff with music. I've actually been planning out an album uh, recently, so hopefully that goes well. Anyways, see you next time.